Talking with David Rosenfeld is always a bit of an adventure. He's a prolific author with more than 30 published titles. He and his wife, Debbie, also rescue older, harder to place dogs. So when trying to talk with him, it goes without saying that the dogs might get into the act. His new book, Muzzled, is part of his Andy Carpenter series. And in this book, David feels as though he has had a global impact. 207's Peggy Kaiser found out more. Muzzled came out about three weeks ago, right? And the world has changed amazingly since then. Really, think of it. <laughs> People are literally wearing muzzles on their face now. <laughs> right? It's remarkable. I've just, you, I mean, influence. most of my books change American culture, but this really has stood out as, you know. When they talk about, you know, being an influencer, you kind of shot to the yeah. top of that list. I, yeah. and it's a burden. It really is a burden. I can't believe it's not my dogs that are, I got 35 dogs here. Oh, yours started mine, right? I did a virtual event the other night and I, I literally had to hide in a laundry room because our dogs were driving me crazy. But they're barking now because of you. So I'm not to be blamed. They go into their yodeling, they yodel, right? Listen to this. Listen to this. I want you to tell me about this Andy Carpenter guy. Um, who is the star of one of your series of books. Where does his character come from? Is he, I really wanna know if he's your alter ego. He comes from Patterson, New Jersey, which is where I'm from. He's an author, hey, I'm an author, no, I'm sorry. He's a lawyer who um, has, shares, is definitely my alter ego, I would say. He's, I'm not a lawyer, but we have the same perspective on life. We're, you know, both don't understand women. We're both physical cowards. We're both like to be sarcastic and obnoxious. So yes, he's, um, he's the one character in any of my books that's based on anyone. And, and he's based on me. I wrote a book called Dog Tripping, which right. was a nonfiction story about our life and rescue. And it was in my voice, because I was telling my story. Mm -hmm. The Andy Carpenter books are in Andy's voice, right? He's the narrator. Right. So. At, when I wrote Dog Tripping, I wrote it back to back with an Andy Carpenter book. Like I finished one and went to the other. And I was actually shocked at, well, shocked is too strong. I was surprised <laughs> at how identical our voices were. So well, that, that's actually when I realized how close we are. I was reading Muzzled and I could hear your voice and I don't know you that well, but did your you get humor, chilled, like, Did you get chilled? Through. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's just... I read it to myself and I, I, my eyes, there's not a dry eye in a room when I read it to myself. I, I actually am literally figuring it out as I write it. I mean, I have no idea where it's going. Well, that's so, what I wanted to ask you because you've told me that. And as I was reading it, I thought, I, I can't, I'm not saying that you're a liar, but I can't believe that. that. <laughs> it's absolutely true. It's, so when uh, you set out to write another book, how much, infer how much of it do you have in your head at that point? Three pages. I know usually a dog leads Andy into the story, right? Something happens. That's true in Muzzled also, right? I think so. Uh, yeah. So a dog leads Andy into the story, and that's it. You know, that's how Andy gets involved, and then I don't know anything from there on in. And it literally, it actually unfolds as I go along. I'll sometimes write scenes that just appeal to me and really come out of nowhere. And at the time I write them, they're not necessarily relevant to the rest of the book. But then those scenes become pieces of the puzzle. And even though I know intellectually I could just take the scenes out if they don't fit, I never do. Uh, I've never, I, now I've written 32 books. I've never written a scene that didn't stay in the book, ever. Obviously, as, as you're reading it, you're kind of peeling away layers and you're beginning to reveal the story and hints and clues. But I find it amazing that you're sort of in the same place as the writer when you're writing it as we are as the reader. We don't know how it's going to end. I'm writing a book now. I'm halfway through. and I don't know who the bad guy is. <laughs> I really have no idea. But there <laughs> will be one because people are getting killed. So there has to be a bad guy. But I have no idea who it is. I mean, there's not that many choices, but I, I don't know who it's going to be. So, you know, I write about dogs because I know. That's what I know. Yeah. Uh, when we visited you, I think you had 21 or 22 at the time. 
Tell me a little bit about your household now. We're way down. We're down to a historic low of 13. Muzzle just came out. What's next? The next is a, is a Christmas book called Silent Bite. Get it? Silent Bite Christmas. I, huh? huh? I mean, it's just the cleverness oozes from me, right? Um, and even though I didn't come up with the title. Um, and the next one is another K-team book called Animal Instinct. Muzzled is relevant in more than one way. Part of the plot involves a superbug and the creation of drugs to combat it. And you wrote this before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think this book is going way over your head, really. You should start with something lesser before, before you graduate to this stuff. It's <laughs> pretty sophisticated stuff. Uh, oh, yeah. So you were talking about medications for superbugs before we were... Before, exactly. Before penicillin was invented. I, I, I literally wrote the book on this stuff. He's a character, all right. We've got more information about David Rosenfeld, the Andy Carpenter series, and his other books, all in the 207 section of our website and mobile app.